the first thing that we need to understand for the content of this portion is that this this is an oscilloscope graph where we have drawn two graphs from two sources and super and we have drawn both of them simultaneously and as, as you can see that none of these graphs lines are perfectly aligned with the grid of the CRO. This can happen in, in the actual case of usage for a CRO and we can uh, we can get rid of this uh, this mismatch by using the X shift and Y shift button. If you if you want to understand that what does that even mean I'll help you to understand. Have a look. Now, let's say this is the actual square. I'm going to keep that intact. So I'm going to copy this twice. I'm going to get rid of the I cannot get rid of the no. <coughs> That's the problem here. Acha. Don't worry, the high is same. I'll make it happen for you. Okay, <clears throat> works for me. I just want to recreate this line. Hmm. So, <clears throat> I I got this out just to give you one specific uh, sense. So, the CRO is giving us a trace like this on the screen and we can sh essentially shift this entire view by using the button that is called X shift or Y shift on the CRO. The purpose of X shift or Y shift is to move the entire view of the screen by left or by right. That's the purpose of X shift on the horizontal movement along the horizontal axis or the Y shift would be movement along the vertical axis. So if we do that, we can effectively have the trace moved from this position I said this was the original position so I'm just now replacing all together so if we use a bit of a y x shift we can have it move to the left so that the so that the vertical lines can align with the vertical grid lines then if we use a little bit more of y shift and we can move it down 
So that this horizontal line, which was the <coughs> which was the reference line for another trace, can look at on a certain x-axis. If you wonder why are we trying to achieve this one to be locating somewhere, why not doing this? Well, we could also do this as well. It is called the calculation with the power, but the calculation after the hackbana. You can do calculation with this as well. But this one makes more sense to me because from this position you can essentially assess how far above the amplitudes are. So this is the this is how the actual graph should look like with the appropriate use of the X shift and the Y shift buttons, and that's how this should have should work. Now you are not gonna be able to draw this graph over here, so I want you to visualize from the original given graph that if we were to move this graph slightly below and slightly to the left, where the peaks are gonna be? Where the peaks are gonna be? Because the question tells us what are the period and the peak positive value, peak positive voltage of the waveform in the diagram. Now have a look. If we, have a, we have a little bit, if you consider this graph, we need to make this entire graph go a little bit down so that this line will align up with this reference point. Now, if we do that, this entire, this, this, this peak point will also go down a little bit. How much? By this much. So if we get rid of this much over here, we are left with about this much height, all the way to the to this this grid line. That's how, how many divisions? About one, two, three, three and a half divisions, or I can say three and a half centimeters. And uh, y see, y gain is given for five volts per centimeter, so you get five volt per centimeter into three point five, which gives you. 35 to 15, okay. 15 volt, nearly equal to to 17. So that's the peak positive voltage that you have. Uh -huh. 17.51. Okay, sorry, sorry. So this value will come about certain something about 70.5 volt. Now I need to give an approximate sign over here. I might I might as well give an approximate sign over here because I'm I, I am not necessarily measuring the actual height of the of this positive peak by ruler and everything. I'm only assuming that this is 3.5 centimeter. So that's why I should get this value. But if you actually use your ruler on a, on a printed version of your of your scale, for example, this is printed as 100, 100%. So let me give you get a 100% ruler. Just because I want to show you this. Mamon, I want to act a ruler that scale scale. So to sort of work to hold it over. Jonas, I get a scale scale in love. Okay, let's assume this is a one to one scale because it says the printable scale rulers adjustable one to one to one to two to hundred metric. So I think this is exactly one of the have is uh, use your use any of the ruler that you have nearby to measure where the where, whether this diagram is perfectly one is to one. So if you just place it on your ruler, this diagram is not at one is to one. 100 to 500 is about five only. Acha. Never mind. We, I have a ruler over here. Let me just make my point across, and we, I'm gonna move forward from this from this discussion. Shita what, what, what I was trying to mean is, let's say you have this ruler, this ruler of yours at hand, and you want to 
exactly measure the voltage. So one of the things that you can do that in any in, in independent version of this of this question, where there is no problem for of zooming, that's why I'm using the word printed version. If you If you place your ruler on this side, you'll, fi you'll find out that the gap, each of these bleed is exactly one centimeter. Each of these bleed happen to be exactly one centimeter. <laughs> and the question also says that, that this is, uh, this is a grid that is calibrated in centimeter square. So each of the square has a side length of one centimeter. In that case, you can essentially place your ruler for a height like this. Let's say you place the zero, zero level, zero, zero, zero meeting, or, or, or with the, with the, with the uh, uh, horizontal uh, trace, and then we can essentially calculate why the peak is that. How many centimeters does the peak represent? The number of centimeters in a ruler, that can be a fraction, let's say uh, 3.7, 3.8, 3.5, 3.2, or whatever. That fraction value is will be essentially your reading, and then you have to multiply that reading, this one, with 5 volt per centimeter, which is the unit. So this is a scale, this is the value. Multiplication gives you the gives you the actual value of the voltage. So that that is something that you can also do. Okay, why am I telling you this? Because in from my observation, the calculated value, calculated value is nearly seventeen point five, which would which would leave you to the idea that if we do it, do, convert this into mathematical rounding, we get how much? 18, 18 volt, right? But none of these options give us eighteen volt. So it might as well happen that this was not supposed to be seventeen point five. This might as well be, uh, I mean, this value should be somewhat less than 70.5. It might be, should have been 70.4 or so. So my value is 18, 18 volt, but you can see over here that for all the peak positive Y voltages, the two choices that we are given, one is 25 volt, and the other one is 17 volt. Obviously 25 volts are not gonna be our answer, so we are stuck with A or C. Do you get my logic? Yes. Okay. So this is a simple little bit of measurement, it will help. And then for to find the period, we have to calculate the distance, uh, we have to calculate the, uh, calculate the uh, distance or, uh, between uh, similar identical points of the graph. So uh, one of the easier way to, that you should think about that, uh, this is not essentially a smooth cost, sine curve or cost curve that we are used to. It's a sort of a uh, tilted uh, square curve, square wave. So we, you might as well consider the the the, uh, dif the difference or the the distance between two identical position of the graph. So one example that I can choose is that this could this is a this is a certain point in the graph. Let's say this peak, an identical point of this one on the next cycle is this over here. So have a count for how many horizontal divisions are there between these two positions. How many? How many how many centimeters are length are uh, over uh, centimeter length? Are gonna be between these two identical positions, which happen to be the crest four. of these two curves. Four, four. four centimeters. Four centimeters. So here is your. This is your x-axis scale. This is your x-axis scale. Two point five millisecond per centimeter. So from this equation, from this information, you can calculate the time period, because the time it takes to complete one full cycle is what we define it as time period. So we can write that time period is given by the in, uh, yeah, the scale 2.5 volt per centimeter into 4 that gives you 10 millisecond. You should understand. So, volt per centimeter, will see. this is not how to use volt per centimeter. This is supposed to be what? Kids. It's about a millisecond per centimeter, which means that each of these division represents exactly 2.5 millisecond. So 2.5 millisecond, 2.5 millisecond, 2.5 millisecond, 2.5 millisecond, 2.5 millisecond, like that. So four of them gives you 10 millisecond. This is the time period. You can calculate the time period from the graph directly. But your question, you're not trying to find out. Oh, sorry, you're trying to find, trying to find the time period. So which one is the correct response? Combining these two values, which one is the correct response from this from this table? <laughs> I think C, C is the correct response. Hmm? Go on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, I mean C. 
the, the period is not 5 millisecond the period is 10 millisecond mahiyat bucho acha so moving on The seven. Hmm. Now, I seven will say the resistance of an elliptical conductor component is measured. The following meter, following meter readings are obtained. So we got two of oh, no, no, sir. No, sir. The problem is okay. not okay. okay. Sir, number 10 take two, Pujan. An ion is accelerated by a series of electrodes in a vacuum. A graph of the power supply to the ion is plotted in time. What is represented by the area under the graph between the two lines? Achha. This is a question of actually a composite question, or that the idea of this question might be recurred for a, a, from a, might be coming from a later chapter. But since this is the chapter defined, defined as quantities and measurement, so they are messing with, messing with you with all sorts of quantities. However, I'm going to show you this. Try to understand what would be the what are the graph axis? A graph of what versus what? Power, power versus time. time. Power versus time. So multiply power into time. What do you get in your head? Uh, work done. Work done or, uh, or energy, right? Yes, sir. So we read, read through the options. Uh, a hobe. Yep. Oh. Sir. 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 So 11 a problem shilo. I'll help with the 11 as well. 11 and 8 are same. Je, tomare hene, khub smartly, perfect number of cycle uh, gona lagbe. Perfect number of cycle gona lagbe wana ki? Bujachi. Kyal kore. 11 nami niya jai. The diagram for the square wave test on the screen of a cathode oscilloscope. A grid of one centimeter squares cover the spin. The time by setting is 10 millisecond per centimeter. What is the approximate frequency of the square wave? <laughs> approximate frequency they are, they are looking for. Now, one of the problems that we have in this graph is that this graph is not essentially scaled. The, the person who took this picture did not bother to adjust their y axis scale to get a good, good adjustment. Did not bother to bother uh, bother to adjust their axis scale to get a good alignment, or maybe they did try, and this is the best they could come up with. Uh, we are not sure. Why am I saying that this is not a good alignment graph? Because what I need you to understand that if you want to calculate how much is the time period, you need to calculate the distance between two identical points of the, of the of the of the wave. Now, what do I mean by saying two identical points? This is what I mean. You can try to calculate the time between these two points. You can try to calculate the distance between time between these two points, or you can try to calculate the time between uh, these two points. Okay. Hmm. Or you can try to calculate the distance between these two points, or you can try to calculate the time represented by. Uh, let's say these two points. But what I want you to understand that you have to choose a certain segment of the of the graph uh, of the graph that will be repeated that is that will be that will be repeated uh, that will be repeatable and give you the entire graph. So what I mean is that if you take from here to here, let's say have a look here to here, how much is the shape? This much is the shape, right? Let me draw the green. Uh, I'm, just, I'm, I'm talking about this part. So if I, if I only take one cycle from here all the way to here, this square graph would, is going to have a, have, a, have a single value size of this much. Now, if you just copy and paste this one after another, one after another, should you get this entire graph? Think about yes, it. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. You will get this entire sure. graph. But if you don't choose this much, rather, let's say you choose this much and copy paste this, should you get this entire graph? No, sir. This is only going to be what? The the buildings without it's any. It's going to be like a bar chart. 
exactly. Or also, or also, just to be uh, just uh, just to be on the same 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 side. I mean, this next part is not gonna uh, this, this next, next part is not gonna be essential. But I want to make sense with the kids. Let's say if you want to measure if you want if you if you copy paste this much graph, would you get this same graph? No, sir. You're not gonna get the same graph because you're gonna be missing this vertical drawing line. That this is a continuous graph. But if you copy paste this much, you're gonna have pretty much the cover the same amount of horizontal time. But you, that graph is gonna be on a discontinuous graph. Every single vert, every every second vertical line should be missing. Now, do I make sense? Time period is the amount Sorry. of time required to complete one full cycle. So, it 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 cut off. So, to to get to to get the exact value of the frequency from the from the zero graph, we have to first calculate the time period. Now the problem of this graph is that we don't have very good alignments. We don't. We don't have very good alignment. What? We don't have very good alignments. So what I mean by this is that here the graph is starting from a specific point. Then it's going forward, and then you have finished over here, not a good adjustment with the grid line. Then it's going over on the right side of the grid line, so you don't have good adjustment over here. So you're having this corner not falling on any of these grid lines unless exactly at over here. This is the position of the of the square graph where it is actually perfectly matching with the grid line. Do you see that everyone? So what I want you to do is to calculate how many periods are gonna be there from here to here. So in this case, you can consider your repeatable part of the graph is this much. Consider this shape. So you're gonna calculate time periods by this manner. For example, let's say I'm, I'm gonna choose the different color. Let's say I'm gonna choose orange. So you're starting from here. Have a look. One, that's one cycle, right? Then two, yep. three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, eight point five. Eight point five totally important. How many cycles does the, how many cycles does this amount of time time amount represent? Eight point five cycle, or you can write eight point five t. It amount the third Now you can simply count how many centimeters do this amount of gap represent. Here we have exactly one centimeter level, so you can count one, two, three, four, five, six centimeters. Six centimeter man, which is this graph is plotted for a scale of ten mil per centimeter. Multiplied by six centimeter gives you how much? Sixty millisecond, right? So eight point five t is equal to six millisecond. Therefore, t goes to other. You get this number. You call that other? Someone? Fractional decimal. So better I get that, that value. 8.5 divided by 16 to 10 to the power of minus 3. If you want to minus second, because I want to get downside in hertz. So millisecond is not necessary 10 ml per liter. I don't want to evaluate directly. Sir, decimal level? Bolo. One four one six point six seven. That's the calculated value. So one point four four one point six 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 eight baby. One point four one one point four one to because one four one point six. Sorry, one four one point six. Yes, sir. One no, 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 no. one four one point one four one six to And I can decimal. Yeah, I can appoint, yes, sir. I think it is. So, you have to go to 142 hertz just approximately. And the how to choose graph is the second card answer. B. Do you say? Also, take a bushel as a cover. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. So, 
Yes, we could. We could. But the reason we did not do that in this case, because we wanted to calculate the time period by as accurate as possible. That's why we have to always prefer to choose best alignment of the of our grid lines. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, but exactly how many centimeters, centimeters are over here? You cannot count this out of your grid line. You can use a, an actual ruler to calculate how many grid, how many lines are there, how many centimeters are there. But that is not a wise choice because the entire point of having a grid is that you be able to use the grid for your calculation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. स्टार्टिंग Manoche, you are saying that if we somehow we use the, we change the scale of the graph so that we can achieve a shape something like this. Are you proposing something? Mane, we can achieve a shape like this. No, sir. Then what are you meaning? But can I draw on the screen? Yes, yes, definitely. I did not uh, stop the internet option. शेप Did you mean this kind of shape? Yes, sir. Then it will box color up or drop for me. Come, is it? Is it? Yeah, yeah, this is good. I'm on for the whole thing. I'm on for the part from the starting point or end point. Then you'd have to go for a boost the problem. Hi, now then you'd have to go for calculating. Uh, uh, preferably uh, uh, finding out the uh, uh, crest to trough. Now, for that scenario, this entire graph would be highly uncomfortable for me to use. For for me, that is. Because if I look at all the all of these horizontal segments, none of these horizontal segments gives you a midpoint that is perfectly aligned with any other grid lines for the represented part. None of this part. If you look at the possible midpoint of all of these horizontal sections, none of them perfectly align with the grid lines. So this is not essentially a very good choice of uh, analysis. We could, we functionally could, but that would not be a great job. Sir? Akmin, Sadia, you Yes. Okay, hello. Sir, frequency back version of the keyboard on 8.5 divided by key? I guess, I guess inverse time period. If it goes to one upon time period. So I inversed it. Hey, sir, 10, 10 to the power minus 3 now? Hey, hey. Tell us our 1416.67 years. Hold on, get your calculator value straight. I mean, why am I getting different values from different kids? What is this? अच्छा <laughs> 8.5 divided by 16 to 20 to the power minus 3. Oh, that's You want to 8.5 point to the blue right? Um, sir, I'm going to see you. Okay, never mind. 
So, any further question about this one? Anyone? I hope not. Okay, let's go for the other. <laughs> next question. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Anyone else? Bolo, problem, bolo, bolo one. I'm waiting for numbers. So 21. Hey. Let's have a look at the possible shape of the curve. Try to appreciate this curve. Let me explain. What this curve shows us the diffusion of a needle of an ammeter varies with the current passing through the ammeter as shown in the graph. So you can see that when the current is zero, the diffusion of the ammeter needle is also at zero. So there is no systematic error. Zero, zero, one. I mean, there is no zero error. Zero errors are always systematic errors. So there is no zero error because the graph essentially starts from the origin. So both the y axis and the graph starting point are pretty much the same point. But what you can see that as the value of the current goes higher, the diffusion of the needle slowly becomes increases as well, but the amount of increase decreases. What I mean over here for one M, one ampere of current increase from zero to one ampere, the amount of vertical rise you're gonna have over here, the same amount of one ampere increase are, is not gonna give you the same amount of deflection because the graph is slowly losing tangent and also losing losing gradient. So we can essentially say that the amount of deflection represented for each amount of current or you can say par amount of current that is going to be reduced as we go for higher values of current so you're going to have a bigger deflection at the initial initial part or small current values and you're going to have a gradually gradually smaller deflection for larger current values which means your scale is going to be your scale should be wider on the starting end and squashing on the final end so which of these options Represent that tra that trend properly. Hey, good. Now you just tell me, what should be the graph shape for B? Increasing gradient. Increasing. Increasing gradient. What should be the graph shape for C? Decrease, dec uh, decreasing then increasing. Yes, decreasing then increasing. And then again, no, only two times. Zero take a five percent to hoche, eight a moto. Zero take a five percent to hoche, eight a moto. So for C, the graph should look like uh, decreasing gradient first, and then it's going to look like increasing gradient. Or in other words, uh, this is going to look something like this. What is that? Sir, y equals to x square, graph in moto? No. Nah. Y goes to x square graph. Graph to uh, it show. I mean, it has its. I mean, it goes to the origin and it's essentially a parabola. We from the but just by observing at the at the at the at the, at the values, we cannot essentially essentially say that exactly which mathematical expression is gonna pick. It might be equal to y goes to x square. It might be equal to y goes to kx square. It might be equal to y goes to e to the power minus x or so e to the power x or something. Is gonna be something of a variable, but not not e to the power x. X to the power something. But what I mean is that just from the by looking at the figure, we can say that this is uh, this represents an increasing trend for the for the first part from one to five, and then it shows the it shows a. Uh, 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 increasing. I mean, here we have the gap decreasing. Here we have the gap increasing. So, for option to see the graph might as well look like this. The gap gap is decreasing. Let's say here is the point that is five, and then it's gonna start increasing over here. So you're gonna have both of this behavior on the behavior if you plot. And this is gonna be just the opposite way around. So this is gonna be first increasing, and then decreasing. Something like that. Oh. See if it makes sense. For both of this, for both of these graphs, that the transition point of the gradient, as per the as per the shown scales, is five. Do you see that? 
up to five is what we are having in English. Any question about this one? Any further question? No, sir. Good. Aha. Now on. So I'm from this side. Can we carry this? Twenty three, twenty four. Bolo, problem, bolo. Sir, twenty nine a problem. I say two. I don't know the how. I'm doing a jump with this because this is one of the problem that should come from the kids. But if you have any other problem, please add up to the discussion as it goes on. Question 292, the key. This is a good one. This requires some pretty nifty calculation. I'll help you. One of the key information that I want you to understand just before I get into the equation, because I know what is the content of this question, is that the entire idea of using a cathode oscilloscope is to have a good view of a variable thing. Variable thing that variable thing can be a variable uh, electricity source, it can be a variable voice source, where you have to use a microphone as a converter. It can be a variable temperature source, where you have to use a thermistor to uh, convert that into temperature to voltage information. It can be a uh, it can be a light intensity so, uh, you can try to observe the changing a change variation of light while the uh, while the additional device you would require is an LDR. So you can essentially observe the change of a, a lot of different physical factors. All that you need is a certain type of converter to convert those change factors into relevant voltage. Because which means that just anything echo to channel to mute coro. If you're not out talking to the channel, help us of mute it. So if we hello. So uh, one of the key part of using the oscilloscope of an, any oscilloscope is that one of the important part is that we're gonna change and adjust the the horizontal scale and the vertical scale in such a way that we have a good measurable curve out of the graph. So what this essentially entails is that you cannot have too much of a big scale so that your graph becomes too much small. Now this is the one, this is the, uh, the other part that I need to understand that if you have a set of values which you are going to show on a graph, if you choose a bigger scale value, your graph is going to become pretty small. Do you appreciate, do you understand what I'm saying? Let me put this in, in perspective. Let me put this in a perspective. Let's say, let's say there are two rectangles over here. And we're going to draw a sine curve which has a peak voltage of let's say 4 volt. And I'm not talking about the horizontal axis right now because uh, that, that could be a bit difficult for me to show some are lenses for both the axes. So let's assume that here are the axes that we have. Let's say for this oscilloscope screen, we chose uh, two volt per centimeter as our Y gain or Y sensitivity. And for this one, we chose, let's say, eight volt per centimeter as our Y, y, y gain. Just for the sake of uh, simple fair drawing, I, I'm gonna draw uh, two more lines over here so that I can make sense over with you. So only four lines I'm drawing. The darker lines, are black lines, are the axis, x axis and y axis. So if you if you if you choose a value of two volt per centimeter, let's say for this two volt per centimeter, you get a shape of this much. Let's say you get a shape of this much. Okay, now what does this essentially mean? That if this would mean that here each of the divisions represent each of the vertical spacing, each of these vertical, for example, the spacing of 
this much that that represents how much how much voltage one vertical space represent how much voltage have a look 2 volt per centimeter so one centimeter in the vertical scale represents how many volts two volts two volts it means two volts so if you are trying to draw, plot a graph for an incoming curve for uh, if you trying to plot an incoming uh, graph for incoming incoming trace that has an amplitude of 4 volt you might you would require this to be covered by four boxes two or two boxes on the top two boxes on the on the bottom so the entire amplitude over here represented is 4 volt so that pretty much makes sense let's say if you if you are trying to show this this exact trace to a second oscilloscope where the trace uh, where the y sensitivity was adjusted to this value the the thing that you are feeding into the oscilloscope that remains the same but the electrical input that we are giving to the oscilloscope that is remaining the same the source is remaining the same only now the observing device has a bigger y gain now how your graph is going to show, show show up like you have to understand in this case each of these vertical cells may represents how much 8 volts whereas the amplitude of your incoming incoming signal is how much 4 volts how many divisions are you going to need to represent 4 volts on an 8 volt scale so we going to need half half division so that that understand here this much represents 8 volts i want to represent how much exclusively 4 volts as am i amplitude so this graph might as well look like this i'm going to draw this with let's say purple This my graph is going to look like this. I'm assuming that for both the cases, the time-based settings are same. So I'm just drawing equal number of cycles. I've drawn full complete cycles on both the graphs, but there is a difference of the amplitude represented for the graph physical shape. But if you take into consideration for the scale value, that is two volt per centimeter or eight volt per centimeter of the y six, you can essentially say both of these graphs represent the exactly same trace. but one is a really expanded vertically expanded one other is vertically quite squashed so the, what is the difference that is what is the reason we have this kind of different shape the reason is this if you choose a small scale value your graph is going to become expanded whereas if you choose a large scale value your graph is going to become squashed can i uh, do you get this point yes sir so so greater scale value jodi boro hoy tar graph er size hoye ashbe choto ग्राफिंग looks like this which looks like this here we have two, two traces but you can see that we can see one full cycle for both at least one full cycle for both the traces which means this is a good adjustment or if you go for and have a look at this curve have a look this is a pretty wide I mean, really wide version of a single gra graph but do we have one full cycle at least one full cycle in this in this figure yeah Yes, sir. We are to tell the truth. There is actually one point two five cycle. If you wonder how, what, what the hell, one point two five cycle? Yes, one point two five cycle. Have a look. Here, one cycle, right? This much is one cycle. If you start from here, this much is one cycle, and then you have how much from the from the equilibrium to the next graph? From the equilibrium to the next graph is always one fourth of a cycle. If you wonder how how do I know this? It's very simple. Take a good look and try to divide this into four vertical segments. This, I mean, this is one full cycle, right? Do we all agree on this one? The part that I'm moving my mouse by. This much is one full cycle, right? Yes, sir. So half half cycle would be this much. Quarter cycle would be this much. So how many cycles do you have in this screen? One point two five cycles, right? Yes, 
do you agree kids everyone yes yes sir okay so we will try to adjust the cathode oscilloscope values so that we can at least represent one full cycle in the graph and also we are not going to adjust it in such a way so that the so, so that the graphs are uh, the so that the curves that we are trying to accommodate they become really squashed together we don't want that to happen either which means that we don't want to have a graph have a have a situation like this in the in a cathode oscilloscope screen this is also something that we don't recommend all right a due to factor ke mathay nao the graph should not be so big that even one cycle is not represented that way it is not a proper choice of scale then again the graph the the scale the graph scale should, should not be so small as to sorry i'm bhul hoyse the graph scale should not be so small as as to make the graph too big that even one cycle doesn't get doesn't get completed the scale value should not be that much small that the screen cannot even accommodate one scale because i have told you earlier smaller scale value gives you what big graph right smaller scale value gives you big graph and larger scale value gives you small graph so we can we should not choose such a small scale value that that even one full cycle is not seen on the scale that shouldn't have be happening similarly we shouldn't choose such a big scale value that the that the graph gets really squashed onto each other and that's that that makes it very difficult to observe so we're not going to do either of them on the extreme sides we have to choose a halfway point that works best for us what this question tells us is of something like this have a look the diagram shows a cathode oscilloscope cro being used to measure the rate of rotation of a flywheel so this is a flywheel which is essentially a pretty heavy metal disc uh, it is perfectly balanced at its center point or its pivot point and it it rotates and it, it can be used as a temporary reservoir of kinetic energy it can be used for a temporary reservoir of kinetic energy if you wonder how a very simple idea is that let's say you have a car sports car that is going down the track and there is a turn before the turn every car has to slow down a little bit compared to a straight line because if they if they don't slow down they're going to uh, swing they're going to swing out towards the curve they're not going to have enough centripetal force now what i'm trying to mean is that as the person as the race uh, and, and, the, and the, as the driver approaches the curve they have to slow down a little bit now we can do slow down in basically two ways one is a regenerative process the other one is a uh total waste process rigid process uh, total waste means you press on your brakes which oh. when, in that in which case the brake pads uh, of your wheel which are adjusted to your wheel mechanism they grab onto the brake disc strongly and you pretty much lose up uh, all okay. the kinetic energy into heat energy of the brake pads and the brake disc and that heat energy conversion cannot be obtained back from the from those devices as a kinetic energy as you leave out of your track the idea is very simple as you enter the curve you should slow down as you leave out of the out of the curve you should speed up now we can essentially use halverner active car upar use korbo yes bujhe hello ki bolcho bujhi nai bhabe be
<sighs> Sorry, I was sneezing. That's why I muted myself. <laughs> Getting back. So uh, we do not want this thing to become uh, too small or this thing to become too large. So that's why we do not, uh, we, we are going to uh, introduce, uh, that's why we're going to introduce uh, the, the proper scale. So let's try and analyze the information that we have at hand. The question says that the diagram shows a cathode oscilloscope CRO with a high flywheel. Uh, sorry, the, the example that I was going by. So you can essentially do uh, the heat conversion using the brake press and shoes, or you can use the flywheel. Flywheel is basically a uh, rotating disc that you can uh, you can you can con you can uh, connect the flywheel as uh, with your wheel move, wheel rotation as you approach the uh, car turn. So portion of your kinetic energy from the car's body would be entering the uh, flywheel rotating mechanism as rotational kinetic energy. And as you leave, as you leave, as the driver leaves out of the curve, they can they can essentially up gain back that kinetic energy from the flywheel to give them a faster acceleration. So this can a flywheel is, can essentially work as a large reservoir of energy for your uh, smoother operation or more efficient uh, operation. Anyway, uh, what is the purpose of the flywheel is not a question, but I'm telling you this just to give you an idea what a flywheel can be used for. Now the, the have a look at the setup of the question. The head shows. Here it shows a flywheel that is going around. Here we have a small magnet that is attached at one side of the flywheel, and we have a solenoid coil over here. And as we know from the idea of fluid magnetism from our all of us, that whenever this magnet is gonna go past the uh, this coil, it will produce an EMF because that's the whole idea of fluid magnetic induction. That whenever any magnet moves with respect to a coil or a coil moves with respect to magnet, they experience a EMF induced or inside the coil, Faraday's law. So. Every single time this magnet is gonna go past the face of the coil, we should get one spike. Now, this this graph that we are gonna get over here might not look as beautiful as a perfect sine curve because for most part of the of the magnet, it is for most part of the time for uh, of the cycle of the magnet or magnet rotation, it is gonna be pretty far away from the coil. So you're gonna have a pretty minimum voltage over here. But the instance when it actually goes to the face of the coil then you're going to get a pretty big spike. So the shape of the graph that you might get from this scenario might as well look like this graph, uh, something like this. Flat, boing, flat, boing, flat, and like that. Or you can also say something like this. So these are the peaks, are the regions where you have the, uh, where the magnet is pretty much passing the exact face of your solenoid coil. And these are the parts where it is moving in the other parts. So that is a, certain in, uh, information that you can uh, keep in your head. So the question says further, the flywheel has a small magnet and, and mounted on it each time with the magnet passes the coil as voltage is generated, which is passed to the CRO. The display of the CRO is 10 centimeter wide. Important information. The flywheel is rotating at a rate of about 2000 revolutions per minute. Which time-based setting will display clearly separate pulses on the screen. So which of this time-based setting would be uh, logical for us to use? So let's go for one by one. Have a look. How many centimeters do you have over here? 10 centimeters. We have 10 centimeters over here. So we have a very good look. What is the revolutions per minute? 2000 revolutions per minute. So if I get rid of this, those drawings, which is just a theory-based drawings, let's work with these numbers. 3000 revolutions per minute. So let's try and find out the time period of this cycle. The time period would be how much? 60 second divided by 3000, right? How many do you get in uh, in second? 60 divided by 3000 means 1 by 500. 1 by 500 is 0 0.002. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. There's a 0 0.02. Zero point zero two. Zero. 0.02. Oh, sir, you wrote an extra sure. zero. Extra zero. This extra is zero. Zero. Zero point 0.02, sir. This one, 
and also because uh, we are going to work with milliseconds and microseconds as well on the, up, uh, on the upcoming values, I can see those here. So just to be for, for my interest, I'm going to write this in millisecond, micro, in millisecond, millisecond, microsecond. It again, millisecond, comma, kula, one thousand, multiply, kutta, habe. That gives you twenty millisecond. Or it again, microsecond, multiply, kutta, hule, ten to the power six, or one million, the multiply, kutta, habe. That way, you are going to get what? Two or four correction marks, be. Chatta, ag, do it. আওয়ার as our as our time based setting for the horizontal scale how many full full waves how many how many full waves complete cycle can we represent in a space of 10 cm here each cm represents once one each cm represents in one second each cm represents one second so in one cm in one cm how many of this of this uh, wave which each of which has a time period of only 0.02 second how many of them are going to accommodate within one cm amount of space how many period 0.02 seconds over here one after another my question how many can you accommodate sir 50 ta hobe na 50 ta hobe but ei logic ta bujhte chilo na shobai ji sir within this space you're going to yes, you will be able to within one 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 centimeter space you're going to be able to accommodate 50 cycles which means within 100 within 10 centimeter you're going to be able to accommodate 500 cycles over here one after another one after another so if you have 500 cycles one after another do you think that would be a good graph to work with no space of 10 cm they're going to be very squashed very congested right right yes sir oh. yes sir so we don't appreciate this so let's go for for the second option use the same idea now we have 10 millisecond per centimeter for 10 millisecond per centimeter this entire graph is going to give us a total of 100 millisecond because we have a space of 10, 10 centimeter over here 10 millisecond per centimeter means each centimeter gives you 10 millisecond so 10 centimeter gives you a total of 100 millisecond of time or time worth representable over in this screen how many seconds can you have in 100 millisecond time period the same time same wave time period was in millisecond that was 20 millisecond now we for this scale the graph graph value from the left to right all the way from the left of the screen to the left of the right of the screen that is 100 millisecond so question how many how many 20 milliseconds can you accommodate in 100 millisecond space five five, five. five. so five full waves within a 10 cm length does appear to be pretty workable that to view us how much is 10 cm Take a ruler and try to visualize. Uh, have a look. How much is 10 centimeter? If you have five full scale graphs equally spaced within that much space, that should be a pretty pretty good workable value. Okay, we have this one as a good conductor contender. Let's have a look at number C. 100 microsecond per centimeter. Now we are getting over here 100 microsecond. So if we have 100 microsecond per centimeter, then in within a space of 10 centimeter, how many microseconds should be should we be able to accommodate? 1000 so this this scale is going to give us a total accommodation within the entire screen of 1000 right 1000 microsecond whereas one of this cycle each one of this cycle is going to require how many how many microseconds 20000 microseconds so can you accommodate even one cycle within a space of 1000 microsecond no sir one no, time sir. period is 25 microsecond you have you have available how much only 1000 microsecond if you choose this scale which means for if you choose this one you are going to have about one fifth of a sky cycle 
on your screen. So you're gonna have a fraction of one cycle. So you're not even gonna have one full one full one full cycle. So that is not convenient. Because like I told you earlier that we shouldn't use such such small of a scale that we cannot even accommodate one full one full wave. Then and also we shouldn't choose such a big scale that the graph become too much consistent or they become too much squashed. So 100 microsecond is not gonna do cut the job for us. I'm not gonna do the calculation for one microsecond because I can see a pattern building up over here that as we are slowly reducing the time based settings, the graphs are becoming bigger. If 100 microsecond cannot accommodate that one cycle, there's no reason, uh, I mean, there's every reason that one, one microsecond should not be also able to cover that. So that's, okay, that's a given. So I'm not doing the calculation part over here. I'm using, I'm discarding D option as a rule of thumb. So B is the ultimately ultimate correct answer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anyone, if you have any question, please ask it now. Or write it in the, in the group chat, whatever you have. Sir, you said that the graph is like irregularly spiky. Can you hear that? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, because this man is going to get close to the coil every single time it is i mean you're going to get the highest emf produced whenever the magnet is closest to this coil so it's going around in a circular option like that for the for a longer portion of its of its cycle of its its of the magnet's one rotational cycle it is quite far away from the magnet so the delta so the change of magnetic field lines is not going to be that much significant on this coil but the instance this this the magnet goes directly in front of the coil, you're gonna have a really rapid change of magnetic field. Sorry, got it. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. Uh, uh, Sajid Shankar, uh, you give us a question that uh, there is uh, please soft twenty five. Okay, we'll go for this. The wind put terminals of a cathode oscilloscope CRO are connected to a supply of peak value 5 volt and a frequency of 50 hertz. The time base set is set at 10 milliseconds per division and the Y gain is at 5 volt per division. Which trace is obtained? I'm at categorization for you. First of all, it says, hey, let me take this question out. The question says that it has a peak value of 5 volt. That is the signal. The time base is set at 10 milliseconds per division and the Y gain is set at 5 volt per division. So you are trying to represent a 5 volt input signal with a scale of 5 volt per division on the Y axis. So how many Y axis divisions are you going to take as amplitude? Think about it. You have connected the y, y inputs of a terminal of a cathode oscilloscope are currently supply of a peak value of 5 volt. Peak value of 5 volt means you're essentially working with a sine curve where the amplitude is 5 volts. That's what the peak value represents right, right over here. So you, if you're trying to accommodate this actual signal within a scale where the, fi, where the scale is Y gain is set as 5 volt per division, in that case, how many divisions should these graphs, these, these segments cover? One. So they should cover one division. So that brings us to the idea that B and A are out of the question because they are covering more than one division. So your, your remaining contenders are C and D. So let's go for the time basic information right now. The question says that the graph, that this input signal has a frequency of 50 Hertz. And the time base is given at 10 millisecond per division. So to make a good sense, we're going to convert this Hertz information into time period and convert that time period into millisecond information. So if I do that, time period is given by one upon frequency, which gives you what? One by 50 Hertz. That gives you uh, 0 0.02 second or, uh, or that can be written as 20 millisecond. Take this in the 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, we have 20 milliseconds. It means that each of the cycle is going to last for a duration of 20 milliseconds. Now, you have to remember understand that if we choose a value, if we choose the, if the, y, if the time base or the horizontal axis that is time base is set at 10 milliseconds per division, 10 milliseconds per division, then each second, each division will represent 10 milliseconds. Each horizontal segment, each horizontal box is going to, each horizontal side of the box or grid box is going to represent 10 milliseconds. So to cover 20 milliseconds, how many, how many horizontal length do you need? Two. You need two, which means each of this cycle would be covered within two horizontal boxes to, to represent, to represent a total amount of time of 20 milliseconds because each box represents 10 milliseconds. That way, to represent 20 milliseconds would require a total of two boxes to have the entire box cover. So, vertically, it should have an amplitude of one box. Horizontally, the time period should be two boxes. So, which one is your answer between these two? D. D is your only answer. Yes, sir. Number 30 to the hand. I said, I have a good idea. 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 Where is Sajid Sharkar? He asked for this problem. Now he's nowhere to be found. Oh no. Okay. I think Sai Sakar is uh, hearing or listening, or maybe he is not around. Kato uh, also, Yes, sir. Dego. Number 30 to Hello, number 30. A quantity x varies with temperature theta as shown. Theta is determined from the corresponding values of x by using this graph. x is measured with the percentage of uncertainty of plus minus 1% of its value at all temperatures. So let's go ahead. Whose statement about the uncertainty of theta is correct? What about the temper what about the values of x that we measure? That will affect the that temperature with a percent uncertainty of x of one person. Let me put it this way. If you measure if your measure temperature is, is zero degree, then your uncertainty will also be zero. Absolute uncertainty. Because one percent of zero is what? Zero. Yeah. If your measured temperature is 5 degrees Celsius, then your uncertainty will be 1% of 5, that is 0 0.05 degrees Celsius. If your measured temperature is 100 degrees Celsius, your error will be 1 degree Celsius. If your measured temperature is 200 degrees Celsius, your error will be plus minus 2 degrees Celsius. Whatever your measured temperature is, your uncertainty would be 1% of that value, plus minus 1% that is. So if you if your measure temperature is larger, you are also gonna make bigger error. If your temperature measure temperature is smaller, you're also gonna make smaller error. The fraction would remain the same. One person remains one person, but the absolute value of the error that will highly depend on who, on whether you are measuring a high temperature or you are measuring a low temperature. Does this idea get in your head? That, is it understandable? Yes, sir. One yes, sir. person remains one person, but the Amount or the absolute uncertainty will be different. So now go through the option choices and see if you can if you see if you can sort this out for yourself. Go through the option choices and give it a try. If it is ambiguous, I'll discuss again. No big deal. But you give it a try. Each of you. Okay, so which one feels like the, the correct one? 
A would not be true. Let me help you about this one. It says X is measuring the percent uncertainty of plus minus one percent. That is a fractional uncertainty, which should be true for everywhere. It says it is a percent uncertainty of plus minus one percent. So the percent uncertainty is plus minus one percent, whether temperature is big or small. This one percent will affect the absolute uncertainty. Do you understand the difference between between percent uncertainty and the actual uncertainty? If you don't, ask me. I'll discuss again. No big deal. Is there a confusion sir. about these two things? Yes, yes sir. sir. I'll help you. One percent means that how much fraction of the original value is errorful. What I mean is something like this. If you write a certain quantity, let's say, uh, wait, hold on. let's say x equals to twelve point five ampere plus minus one percent. It means that error is 1% of this value. But if you write x equals to 12.5 ampere plus minus 1 ampere, it means the error is 1 ampere entirely. I should have given a 0 over here for just because to, to, to give the two values equal. So this is, the, this is what we call absolute uncertainty or the uncertainty only which comes with a number and also a unit of the original quantity. This is what we call percent uncertainty, uncertainty, which is also another expression for fractional uncertainty. This, is, this draws its actual value as a portion of the original value, whereas this value itself is a value. If I convert this expression into actual numbers, I might as well get how much? 12.5, 12 12.5, .5, I might as well get this 12.5 plus minus it a one percent called the hobby 0.125 so I might write 0.1 I have put it on the that's the one percent value so one 12.5 plus minus one percent means one percent of this of this number is errorful whereas 12.5 plus minus one ampere means a product about the full one ampere of error do you difference? Yes, sir. a fixed value. Like, let's say, business business to business same is the property of business of the borrow hobby to wash a 10 percent amount of the security segue. Borrow the hobby. Do you understand? So percentage means a fraction of the original value, whereas the, whereas the fixed value means a fixed value. So this is what we call the absolute uncertainty. This is what we call the percentage uncertainty. That's the difference. So if that discussion makes sense with you, now give it a try one more time and see if you can sort this out. Help yourself. Now, let me have help. C. C is the correct response. <laughs> Have a look, everyone. Can you logically decide that the correct answer is supposed to be C? And can you also logically discard that why A, B, and D would not be acceptable? Sir, yes. A. Yes. A R B Korotai Hobana car because the question is saying that the personal uncertainty is a variable. The question specifies specific uh, directly that the personal uncertainty is a plus minus one person. Whether for small values or large values, the personal uncertainty is same. Read A and B. The personal uncertainty is in theta is least, which would mean that it is bigger in the higher value. But that's not the case. The personal uncertainty is exactly plus minus one person. The personal uncertainty is not a variable. How this would affect the absolute uncertainty, that would be variable depending on how much actual value you are trying to measure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everyone, it is clear, Mr. Shabar. Give me some response in the chat window. Yes, G, sir. If you don't want to talk yes, to. Yes, sir. In the chat window. There are 25 people over here. I might as well get 20 responses. At least.
All right. Workable. Anything else from this MCQ paper? Anyone? Apparently no. Uh, so I'll I'll not badger on you on this one. When I'm putting class, say wash your clothes, wash your clothes, wash your clothes. Apis hai bol bhai, bola putting class abalar kisko nahi. So I'll be going for the paper two worksheet. So I'll I'll be expecting numbers from you. So have a paper two worksheet as at hands. And what is the worksheet? I mean, do it long enough. That's what I'm going to do. तुम सब फॉर्म फिल अप कर सो जी सर यस गुड जेटी जी जेटी एड्रेस दिस हो एड्रेस सर आमी कोर्ट से गई नहीं क्या ना तो रोल नंबर नहीं सर आपने देन नहीं एक ना मैं आपने नो लिख रहा हूँ अच्छा ठीक है सर मैं आपसे आपसे क्लास पर आप उसे तो रोल नंबर दे दी वो सॉरी तो पहले तो आपने आगे हुई था लेकिन � Yes, sir. So make it happen. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, what is the question? Sir, paper two or worksheet? Sir. Bola, bola. Sir, I have an address setting into problem with it. I'm sorry, Baba. 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 So paper two, we are at paper two right now. So paper two problem more should go. Jekun na kiki paro nai. Acha, I'll be I'll be going page by page. Page number two three. Page number two three. Kar kono problem. I'm saying two page two pages because this how how the worksheet should usually look like. Page number two three. Kar kono problem. Page number four five. Six seven. Watch your social classes are not gonna be in general. I'm not gonna solve all the problems for you because there are a lot of problems that you should be able to solve if you are in the class. Actually, if you're actually doing the classes, if you didn't solve, if you couldn't manage time, that's not my problem. That's your your problem, which you, for you for which you are gonna suffer in the long term. And so, so watch your social classes are entirely on a request basis or on a need to know basis. सर एक ने तो प्राइस और बुला प्रॉब्लम में आपने सॉल्व करी दिए सर आप देखिए पेपर टू आशीष पूर्ण ना तापो पूर्ण ना सॉल्व है नहीं एक्चुअली वन बैक एंड फोर्थ एंड बाकी गुला सॉल्व कर जाए हम लोग जाए हाँ आप लोग सॉल्व करेंगे अच्छा तले इंजीनियर शॉप 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 आते एक बार काउंट रिस्पोंस नहीं डू एनी ऑफ यू हैव एनी प्रॉब्लम लेफ्ट दैट यू वुड लाइक मी टू डिस्कस इन द पेपर टू आर्शिट इफ नॉट देन आई माइट एस वेल मूव टू कार्मेलिस से मोना आर्शिट आई एम नॉट टेक दिस टू डिस्कस टेन मिनट्स मोर जस्ट अप टू नाइन फोर्टी टेन मिनट्स गिव मी टेन मिनट्स मोर ये बट वाशिंग ने कार्गो रोकोशन है से नो प्रॉब्लम मेजरमेंट ओके दैट्स फॉर वन पर्सन अप्रिशिएट दिस सिंस यू आर नॉट पॉपिंग एनी क्वेश्चन आई एज्यूम दैट दिस इज डन सो इफ आई गो फॉर द कार्मेलिस वर्कशीट अम्म आगे एमसीक्यू टक करा बो तार एमसीक्यू टक करने जैसे शुभिदा है जेपे पर टूर कुशल बोला और एक इजीली बुझ आ जाए ना कि आगे एमसीक्यू आगे पे पर आगे पे पर टू करा बो कुंडा का कोई लाभ है सर एमसीक्यू टक करा अच्छा एमसीक्यू आए करा ठीक है स्पाइन रुद्रांत तुम्हें खाना मंडो करो ना ओल the I think I gave you a small homework from this paper, which I, for which I asked you to at, attend at least the political questions. That was a given homework for before the invocation because I discussed the entire political part. So I'm going to start with this one first, which will be 2.3. Can I? 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 Can I?
But as you can understand, this is 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4. .2 so I'm going to be jumping for the positional part. So you give me some numbers that you have attempted and could not solve from the positional six segment of this worksheet. Tell me, page number 11. Page number 11, anyone? 12. Achha. Since you are not asking any questions, I'll do I'll this is some questions on my own because I believe many of you did not even anticipate that we're gonna solve this, this one today and you got lazy. So I'll discuss. One of the key parts that you need to understand for this question is that in your mechanics, in many cases, they assume that initial velocity direction is the positive direction. I'm talking about the mechanics of your mathematics subject, which is a good way. I don't say it's a bad way, but it's a bad way in the sense that if you change your positive direction in your head for every math's initial velocity direction, then you're going to have the sign of your vector quantities to be variable accordingly. Now, that is something that we do not prefer to adopt in physics. In physics, we prefer that we prefer to have an empirical or universal or all 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 for everyone to be on the same behavior that we consider that upward vectors are positive, downward vectors are negative, rightward vectors are positive, and leftward vectors are negative. That we assume for granted for general discussion, rule of thumb. It's not something that you have to do. It's something that we prefer to do to avoid confusion among all the people. This is why the correct response for this option is minus 9.81 meter per second square all the way. This is the correct response. The most common wrong response for this question is uh, I think uh, where, where, where there is one of the zeros involved. For example, this one. The, well, many of the students tend to think that whenever the particle goes at the highest, highest position, the acceleration becomes zero. That, uh, that is absolutely wrong. Think, come to think of it. Monaco act object to be vertically upwards stroke or so. You have thrown a ball vertically upwards. The ball is rising and slowing down, slowing down, slowing down due to, due to a gravitational acceleration. Comes to the maximum points of rise. And which at which point it is momentarily at rest. If the acceleration does become zero at this instant, why should the ball ever start falling back to earth? Shouldn't the ball be stuck over there forever? Because zero acceleration means zero force. Zero force means there is nothing, not, there is no force available on that object to bring it down back to earth. Is that the case? Does the ball get stuck in midair? No, sir. It doesn't. Because the object is always subject to its gravity. So the force always works on the, the weight, the gravitational force always works on the body, which in turn also means that the acceleration is always present on the body, which has the pretty much the same value, <coughs> minus 9.81 meter per second squared. It is always working downwards. They have already told you in this question, taking vertically upward as positive. So vertically downward vector would be negative. Uh, <coughs> number seven, Sorry. Bolo. Sir, kintu um, judi jokhon highest point e reach kore ekta object, to tokhon to momentarily velocity zero hoye jan na. When velocity is zero, tokhon to acceleration is zero hoye jay. No, velocity zero hoye zero hoye acceleration zero hobe eta to badhu samulok na. Simple ekta graph to mane dakhai. Mano kore eta hoche ekta object e vt graph, ekta oscillating object e vt graph mano kore erokom. Velocity zero kothay kothay. A can a velocity zero, right? G. Would you say that the gradient of this graph at this position is also zero? Would you say that? Is the gradient of this curve mm. over here mm -hmm. zero? No. So you get my point. Achha, velocity achha, zero achha, 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 Thank you. Yes, sir. G, sir. You can essentially say, I mean, I mean, you at a different diagram, just to make sense with you, try to get this equation in your head. F equals to ma, right? M is a scalar quantity. Acceleration and force, they would be related to each other in terms of presence or, or absence. If, an, if, if the acceleration of a body is zero, then the force on the body will also be zero. It's going to be zero. Exactly, because, because 
acceleration is basically m times sorry force is basically m times the acceleration numerically speaking but if you consider for final velocity or velocity velocity is not directly related to acceleration because final velocity is given by initial velocity plus acceleration multiplied by time so you have the summation of two vectors giving up to a third vector so in any case you might have your initial vector initial velocity in this direction and maybe your at works in this way and your final vector final velocity is going to be like that so you cannot essentially determine that it is zero it is zero but you bolte parbana because v comes from both the initial velocity and the acceleration exclusively acceleration becoming zero does not necessarily make velocity final velocity zero because it is the sum of two vector quantities that makes sense देखो A stone is positioned horizontally in a vacuum and moves along a path, as shown. X is a is a point on this path. X V and X H are vertical and horizontal lines, respectively respectively through X. Okay. X T is the tangent to the path at X. At along which direction do forces act on the stone at X? What is the alignment of the force on which the uh, what is the alignment of the force that works on that stone at position X? What is the alignment of that force? Vertically downwards. Exactly true. Sorry. It's going to be vertically downwards because it's it will be that projectile motion happens by the virtue of the gravitational force. Most common response is x t. Students will never give give x h because the question reads that it's in a vacuum, so they can pretty easily almost everyone. Decipher that there should be no, shouldn't be any air resistance, so horizontal forces are gone. The most common common mistake is that students tend to choose x t. You have to understand one thing: x t is the alignment of the instantaneous velocity at that at that point. X t is the direction in which the velocity of that of that object is working at that point, whereas x x v, which is the vertical line, is the alignment of acceleration throughout the motion. Number eight. Before I get into number eight, I'd like to write some equations over here just to help you remember stuff. Do you remember? Do you recall these proportionalities? Yes, sir. I'll help you remember. This is from the first equation. E equals v equals to u plus a t. If your object accelerates to a certain value, sorry, if your object accelerates to a certain value from in from rest, then this proportionality is applicable. Final velocity will be really proportional to time. If it's a decelerating case and the object takes t time to come to rest, which means if your final velocity is zero for a deceleration case, then The amount of time it is going to require to stop is going to be directly proportional to the initial velocity value that it used to have. So for both of the cases, we have to consider one of the velocities to be zero. This is from the first equation of motion. So from the third equation of motion, we get s proportional to t squared. Displacement is directly proportional to the time squared. Or if we do root over on both sides, we can say root over of displacement is directly proportional to time. So this comes from equation number one. 
this proportion only comes from equation number three. Both of these proportion only come from equation number four, where we had the equation v square equals to u square plus twice s. If you consider your u zero, you get v square proportional to s, which can replicate into v proportional to root over s, or this one can replicate into u proportional to root over s. So this is for the acceleration case. This is for the, I mean, this is acceleration from rest. This is deceleration to zero, to rest. That is. So these are the uh, uh, proportional that we have. If you wonder why am I bothering about this, because this MCQ requires that knowledge. Have a look. The diagram shows the laboratory experiment in which a feather falls from rest in a long evacuated vertical tube of length L. The feather takes time t to fall from the top to the bottom of the tube. So if you go to chamber, bottom of the tube, it's pretty simple English. How far will the feather have fallen from the top of the tube in a time of 0 0.5 t? So we are having a variation of time. We are trying to find out the distance followed. So we are trying to we are, we are trying to uh, trying to uh, relate which of the two variables, distance displacement or distance covered over time. So the proportionality that is convenient for us to use is this one or this one. You could use either of them. I mean, it is the image Let's say s proportionality square. I can write, convert this proportionality into a convenient equation in this format. S1 by S2 should be equal to what? T1 square divided by T2 square. See if it makes sense. Proportionality constant is the proportionality constant got cancelled out because it's an equation. Do you understand this conversion? Does this make sense? Yes, sir. Respond. Yes, Everyone. sir. <laughs> this is the simple way to convert any proportionality into equation. Now I'm going to start assigning value to this one. That, that question said that for the first scenario, the question says that it falls the total length of L within a time period of T. So I'm going to replace those information over here. So let's say L is fallen within a time period of T. And then it says when, how much would it have fall, fallen within a time period of, of 0 0.50 T. So I'm gonna, oops. I'm gonna write 0 0.50 t whole squared. This is my time that is given. I want to calculate the unknown. Let's say that unknown in this case is s2. I'm repeating s2 as s2, or you could write x over here, whatever you want. But I prefer to not include more variables. I have to just cost multiply kore. You're gonna and I have to calculate how much is s2 in terms of l. You're gonna get a number over here. Have a go and find out this number. How much do this, that, does this number come? 0.25. This is supposed to be 0.25. Everyone, please agree. Or if you, or if you don't agree, ask me questions. Yes, sir. Do we get 0.25? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, your new distance cover should be how much 0 0.25 of l so correct response is which one b b is the correct response all right uh, since i asked you i'm gonna be elongating in the class for only 10 minutes it's about 11 minutes past so i'm not gonna be taking more of your time uh next class we're gonna start solving the this mcq paper and if we can make time after after finishing the discussions of this paper we'll be going to the paper two so a point class kobe Wednesday. Sir, Wednesday. Saturday. Saturday. So you have uh, quite some days in between. I expect a good participation of all the people in the in the class the next class. People who do not ever ask questions from next class, I'll try to pick you up. I'll ask you. You answer me this question. So have your preferences straight and please indulge in the process. I really appreciate this because you'll need that. Thank you, everyone. The class is over. Stay safe. Stay healthy. I love this. Sir, Sir.